It's been six days since the initial firefight between the federal government and the Branch Davidians. And David Koresh has released 21 children from the compound. And it looks like a child. It looks like a child in the back of that van. After being questioned by the FBI, the children are brought to stay in a Waco orphanage known as the Methodist Home. Is it on? Yes, it's on. Hi, Mother. Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama. It was complete chaos for these kids. You know, they were all tired, sleep deprived, scared, literally with people they thought were going to hurt them. In fact, the first words ever spoken to me by any of these children was, are you the guy who's going to kill us? While the standoff between the FBI and Koresh continues, children inside the Methodist home find comfort in being together. When we first got to the Methodist home, um, I, we were with all the kids. We were in the same, you know, there was just a big room and there was, you know, bed, 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 bed. In the beginning, these children were, to the untrained eye, they looked pretty normal. But inside, it was clear that these children were all very, very, very um, anxious. The children were sometimes secretly videotaped and asked about Mount Carmel by the staff to help the FBI. Older children, like Mark Jones, were suspicious of their motives. This thing right here is the camera. They videotape us every day. This is why it's called a horrible place. I remember going to therapy, you know, out there and talking to them and being in a little room and being able to put your face against the glass and see through it. There's people in there looking at you. About five? Yeah. I don't really. You go put, go put in that corner. Okay, <laughs> Stuff like that, which is a little, I thought was a little funny, you know, out there and they're watching us. Please stop watching us. I ain't watching us today. They are watching The kids would show off for the staff, singing about religious martyrdom. They were looking for something and I was showing it to them. I'm um, thinking how crazy we were, how, how it had affected us, you know, so bad that we were bad kids or, you know, even when we grew up, we were going to be terrible. I just thought they were crazy more than I was. I'm going to shoot you right in the head. Are you? The children had witnessed not only gunfire, but many had also witnessed the violent death of a parent or close family member. If you like shooting us in the head, why don't I shoot you in the head? I don't like shooting you in the head. Pow, 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 pow right in the eye, pow, 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 right in the eye. It was clear that they had some secret, that they knew. Well, there's stuff that they know about this that we don't. And you'll see. You're, you'll find out. And so it was pretty clear within 24 hours of being with these children that there was a plan uh, to have a final battle. And um, they were expecting it. Um, they felt that the outcome would be uh, apocalyptic. A week into the negotiations, the FBI is still pushing to get more kids out. Koresh breaks his promises, saying God told him to wait. Finally, on the 7th of March, I can remember vividly that David, he got upset and he said, wait a minute, you don't understand. The rest of these kids are my kids. They're not coming out. And there was just absolute silence in the, in the negotiation room because we, everybody recognized the magnitude of that statement. On March 8th, Koresh sends out a videotape of his followers. The tape was never made public during the standoff. I'd like to share with you uh, some of my family, seeing that, uh, of course, obviously everyone in the world knows something about it. No one was forced to and say in Mount Carmel. To leave was to put your life in an unknown future and to put yourself in an unknown category in the eyes of God.
Are you yeah. being held against your will? No, no, no. no. Uh, do you have a desire to leave here? No. As more weeks go by, both sides are frustrated by broken promises. We had not had a single person out since the middle of March, I think the 21st, 22nd of March. No one had come out for nearly a month. Nearly a month. What do you believe in? Faith. Yeah. There were times throughout the siege when he, the negotiators would be promising one thing and the tactical team, as they called them, the guys in the tanks, would be doing something totally opposite and going against all the promises or the deals that were made. The FBI increases pressure tactics on the Davidians, shutting off electricity, bombarding the compound with strange sounds. There were these escalating behaviors by the FBI that, that in my opinion, actually were going to make things worse. And based upon what I was hearing from the children, that they were essentially playing right into the hands of Koresh, that he, this is what he wanted. He wanted to precipitate a final apocalypse. We've repeatedly asked them to any kind of sign that they were willing to come out, but it was time to force a conclusion to this, force them to come out. The FBI convinces the new Attorney General, Janet Reno, that children are being abused at Mount Carmel. She approves their plan to use tear gas. There are still 25 children inside Mount Carmel. On April 19, 1993, the children of Waco will witness the final battle. <laughs> 